So we're out here today um, doing a comparison between the Morver and the Banana. We're going to be doing a point system, so every event that we do, um, whoever wins that gets a point. We're going to be doing drag racing. We're going to be doing slalom racing, sort of. We're going to do hill climbs. Dead we're, poles. We're going to do dead pole. We're going to talk about uh, comfort, driving impressions, our thoughts and feelings. I love expressing my feelings. It's going to be a good time. So check this out. We're going to be as fair as we can be. Oh, let's set this up. So right here we have a 1961 Lakewood wagon. It's the Morver. It is on 40 inch tires with eight pounds of air in, in there. The 2001 Jeep Cherokee, it's the Banana. It's on 35 inch tires with eight pounds of air. The Morver is setting at nominal 82 inches. Why the Banana is 74 inches. Okay, 100, almost 119 inches. We're sitting right at about 101. As you can see, the banana seats five people comfortably with room to spare. <laughs> Hip room. We'll just say 54 inches. These are super precise measurements. We'll call this leg room 81 inches. All right, and then head room, 44 inches. That's if you hold up the... Headliner. Yeah, headliner. <laughs> I can put my legs straight. As you can see, this one only seats four. We're at 54 inches. 87 inches is 46 inches. 46. Yeah, we have more interior space. Amazing. So the banana is smaller in every dimension exterior wise and I need this vehicle. I, I use the heck out of it so I'm going to award a point to the banana for being the right size. Corvair is dimensionally bigger and I do need that too so I'm going to award a point to the Corvair. I can haul more people in the banana. Point to the banana. This is cooler. I can, <laughs> I can fit this one you're actually more comfortable. There's more interior room in every direction. So point to the more of air. You get a point. You get, you a, point. get a point. You get a point. <laughs> what do I do with all my points? <laughs> you cash them in. All right. For raises. Okay. Hundred ninety is what I traded at. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's that's what the factory rates the engine at. And it's never been out, never been worked on. 35s and what gears? 513s or 538s. I'm gonna my guess is 125 to the tire. 125 to the tire. He's an optimist. That's my guess. I'm gonna say 115 at the wheels. Uh 105. 120. 116. 111. 111. Okay, you're at 110. Yeah, who took 105? Woo! Is that what it is? That means you buy lunch. Well, yes. That's the average. About well, I'll take it. That's the average. <laughs> So we got a call for Hefe. He's stuck in the sand. We're gonna pull him up to that spillway with the banana, and then we'll put him back, move him over about I don't know 10 feet, and we'll pull him up with the Morver, and we'll 
compare him. Yeah, you Deadpool. Know. Yeah. I'm not gonna help him at all with this. Just I would just be a neutral and steering. No gas, no nothing. So it's all on the banana. Um, that was a tough pull. The sand is super soft. Ready? I got boots on too. Oh, I got... oh. I'm not filming. You have to film. Dang it! <laughs> wow, Tucker, you do run. Whew. Okay. Whew. Oh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> Whew. That was quite the dead pull. Quite the workout. Looky, looky what we got here. Oh yeah, they're in stock at matsoffroadrecovery.com. So both of these tests were done with a 7 8 inch Matt's recovery rope, 30 foot long. So, let's go do this. I felt, it felt like it was at least one third or one quarter the amount of work. So I'm gonna say in the dead pull competition, point goes to the Morver, but the banana got it. The man, banana handled it, but the Morver just handles it easier. The weight, power, and tire size, those are all coming together to help in ascent. Now, 
A dead pole in the sand is vicious. It is the worst case scenario. Even if somebody's in some two wheel drive open differential truck, they're gonna be adding 400% more help than a truck that's just completely dead, dead pole. So it looks like we've got about an eighth mile course set up here. We're gonna do a little sand drag and see which one uh, does better. We're gonna be in four wheel drive, low range. Um, both the Jeeps have the same locker system. They've got the power lock in the rear and the Detroit in the front. And the advantage in gearing is going to switch here because he's got lower gears. I don't know. I think this is going to walk away. This helmet Probably. might help him though. Yeah. So yeah, that was awesome. Our zero to like, like the first 60 feet, we're not very different. So getting out of the hole, we're about the same. The sand just, there's no grip. The great equalizer. Yeah. Everybody gets stuck in the sand. And we'll put this in the center too. So we're doing a tug of war here. The banana versus the more of air. And we're doing it on the sand. This, this type of tug of war really only works good on pavement or really hard surfaces. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna lose? Me. You're gonna win? No matter what? Because that's I'm all you do? A but I do predict that no one's gonna overpower the other one because we're just gonna sink. Although I would like to point out I'm slightly uphill. We're ready. We're ready. Three, two, one, go. my t-shirt <laughs> you're wearing it well I don't I want another one yeah that went about like I thought it would we need to do it on the road so we're gonna do it on pavement next climb all the way out that big that's a big hill it doesn't look it that's big that's a big hill all right so we're just gonna do a little hill climb here comparison to see which one climbs the hill faster one thing I would like to note is that one's been running a little hot. We've had to throw a little bit of uh, water on the radiator. My point is the cooling system in this, we've upgraded it to make it big enough. And on that, uh, we're still, I think they've got the heater on right now. Ah, full blast. Oh, it's lovely. You should, you should join us. Other than the fact that, that we had to run the heater to stay under temp, and they didn't. They just drove. So we've had the heater cranked in here, and my feet are super warmed up. If you ever want to ride in the Jeep, you don't. It's not worth it. <laughs> well, the matchup has been a lot closer than I ever thought it would be. 
very surprising. Yeah, but the more Ver feels like it's handling it and it feels like we're just thrashing the yeah. Jeep. <laughs> so we're just gonna do a little flex comparison here just to see how they articulate. We're gonna put them pretty much to their limits. That's pretty well it. She's lifting the tire. She's lifting the tire. So there's maximum flex right there. When you're completely maxed out, if you're not rubbing the fenders, you're leaving some flex on the table. That's the rule, right? Oh, we left some on the table. Back to the drawing board. Look at this though, there is daylight under this tire. I think. lift the tire I don't think it will I think because of the shorter wheelbase it won't and being more narrow it won't have the flex off like we won't be able to get it yeah. in that hole and up and on this high yeah. back up it's already oh, lifting. never mind we're good it's already lifting Same thing. Yep. Oh my gosh. All right, so we're tucked up in there nice. We're dropped out of here real nice. Just barely touching there and almost touching there. Probably why the brake hoses are breaking because we're kind of using them for limiting straps. We need to remedy that. Okay, Lizzie, ease it right off of there. How do you feel the flex off went? I feel like it went really well. I mean, we maxed both vehicles out. We pulled the wheel on the Corvair and the Jeep, and the Corvair pulled a little later. So I say the point goes to it. <laughs> point goes to the Corvair, but just barely. If the Jeep had the same length of wheelbase, I bet you. Uh, it'd be, it'd be a lot, lot more. Lot, yeah, it'd be, well, it, it would be better. Both of them have more flex than I need, or they have plenty of flex. Freddie right? says about being Rudy. Yeah, Trevor has more flex than we need. <laughs> so here's, here's my impressions. Driving the Corvair around, it's like, yeah, casual driving. It's doing really cool things. So when you're right, driving around in the Jeep, you just feel like you're getting the crap beat out You're of white knuckling you. it. I know what you're talking about. It's like combat <laughs> conditions yeah. in when you're driving the Jeep out here. No, yeah. because we go through the tunnel and we start heading up and you guys are just going and that thing looks like it's riding yeah. so smooth. I can't and we're you. in the thing just bouncing around. I see you're picking different lines a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, which one's more comfortable to ride around in? Uh, Come on, the entire team. We need the entire team. The Corvair is definitely more Three, comfortable. Three, two, one. One. The Cherokee. Oh, I thought we were all in more the air. But to be fair, there's more money in one corner of the suspension on that car than the entire suspension on this car. So we might be changing that here pretty quick. So this is the nighttime portion of our comparison. We're going to be comparing the lighting systems on both rigs. So we do a lot of night recoveries and lighting has been an issue on a lot of them, as you guys know. So. More for filming than for actually getting the job done. I don't know. I've taken a couple tumbles due to low lighting. Yeah. So this is the night section. We're going to be comparing how they perform and how the lighting is. And it's got to be flashy. So this light bar looks cool. And uh, middle schoolers will think you're cool because you have it. But what it really does is it shines on all the dust and then bounces off the hood and back and shines on the dust again. And you cannot see out this window. So it's great for setting up, like when you're outside working, like if you're outside winching, great for that, but it is not good to drive around. Also, so. to point out, we know it might not be mounted right. We can mount it farther back and get rid of that issue, or we can mount it off the bumper and get rid of that issue, but we don't want to do that. It's just not worth our time anymore. So yeah, I'm not gonna move it to make it better. 
I'm going, we're gonna do something different. Lighting system on this is stock, except for we've got some LEDs that are pretty good projection headlights. These are really good headlights. So these headlights did more for nighttime driving visibility than that light bar did. Um, other than that, it's completely stock lighting. There's no auxiliary lights on it whatsoever. Well, this has LEDs all the way around. There's not an incandescent bulb on this vehicle. So we've got the headlights and the marker lights, turn signals. But we've also added some pods on the front, pods on the back, and some pretty cool rock lights that help you see when you're around, uh, stumbling around in the dark. It's really nice to have those lights. When that rolled through the toll booth, it just lit it all up. And this one, it was still dark. Yeah, so I actually went through the toll booth easier with this one because I could see the walls. Oh, just walking around, you can see, you can walk around this. You're not gonna be stumbling over rocks and tripping over things. So, and less likely to leave gear at night. <laughs> so that's the end of our night comparison. Now on to the next one. banana beats the Morver in braking although the higher speeds this thing is sketchy to panic stop this thing yeah it like wants to tip over it wants to, it wallers pretty yeah. bad so how do you like the lean it's kind of scary if you go around a like a turn too fast like it it, want, it, it fucks you out <laughs> it needs to be it tries to throw you in the ditch is what it does it yeah. needs to be fixed um, the slalom, we didn't really race or time, but you can clearly see that this one has a, a worse wallowing problem than that one. Neither of them are fantastic. But they're not necessarily but, built for that either. But that one's not as bad as this one. <laughs> so this next test is going to be pounds per square inch on the ground. So this is a lot of fun to do. You just take a tire, or you take some paint, you put it in a thing, take a roller, and you do this. Eight pounds of air in the tire. Let's see this. Okay, jack it back up. We should have good transfer. Now this is gonna give us our footprint on a hard surface. On soft surface, it's actually gonna increase. Beautiful. Hard All right. Be able to slide a piece of cardboard under it, Tucker. I'm an overachiever. So there's the footprint at eight pounds of Ooh, air. Pretty close. Okay, we need to figure out the area on these. Who is the mathematician? 
So 14.5, that's the length. The width is 10.5. On this one, the length is 13.6. Width is 9.75. So the square inches on that one is going to be 13.6 times 9.75. That, so the area is 132.6. Okay, so let's do this next one. So 14.5 times 10.5, 181.25. Is her handwriting better than mine? It's pretty similar. So the total weight of the banana was 4,260. So put that as the total weight. So this one is the total weight of the Morbear. It is 5,460. So that's 725. Okay, feed me the other ones. They're what, 132.6? Yeah. Times four equals 530.4. Okay, so now we need to do divide 5,460 by 725. Is that correct, Trevor? Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Okay, just write. 7.53 and label it as pounds per square inch. Okay, let's go over here, write the same thing. 8.03, yeah, they're very similar. So the Morver has brand new tires on it and one thing that I know about brand new tires and sand is no go. So the banana has an advantage with its halfway worn out tires, but we're splitting hairs, but very important hairs. When these tires get about halfway worn out, there's gonna be a marked difference on how well this goes in the sand. And when they get completely worn out, it'll even be a notch up from that. So the smoother those tires are, the better they go in the sand. So this little test that we did, Arts and Crafts Day, um, goes to show that the Morver is lighter on its feet than the banana. Not by much, but enough. And that's what we were shooting for. We were shooting for, we met our goal. It's in there. All right, so this next comparison, we're gonna check uh, approach and departure angles and see if we've gained anything with the quarter. 44.4. And 72.7 degrees. I'm just estimating, but this one seems to have a better approach angle. Yeah. I'd have to do the math. Slightly. 38.8 degrees. 54.1. All right. Advantage goes to Morver. Next comparison space for the dogs. Load up. As you can see, there's lots of headroom and lots of running around room in the banana. Good dogs. Okay, come on, come out, come out, come out. So let's see how the more air stacks up. All right. Can you even get up here? Load up. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 Rejected. <laughs> okay, come on. Come here, Max. Right. Come on, up, up, up. Oh, nice. come on, Liddy. Good job, Max. Okay. There's also plenty of room in there for them. Not as much headroom. Lady, come. Come here, lady. Lady, come here. Okay, sit there. All right. So it will work, but I don't think they can get in and out of it easily, especially after they've been running. There's no way they're gonna be able to jump up there. I'm gonna have to set them in. Come on. Good dog. <laughs> Point goes to the banana. So this brings us to the conclusion of our comparison between the Morver and the banana. And I've got to say, um, I'm going to get teary eyed here. No, I'm not really going to. So let me tell you, this old girl here has worked hard for me for years and years and it's a thankless job. And I've been kind of neglecting the maintenance and upkeep and every day I just get in it and just go to work and it works without complaining. 
even though this whole episode was about comparing these two vehicles, they're actually not built for the same purpose. This one obviously has been with me for years and has done a lot of work and we put it in some crazy situations and it's always pulled through. We've got the new vehicle here, the Morver. It was inspired by the banana. Some of the things that I wanted, wanted out of the banana, it couldn't deliver without changing what it was. So I built another tool that's just a little bit bigger. And these two vehicles are gonna be working together moving forward to rescue people all over the area, inside the state, out of the state, anywhere we go. And hopefully you enjoyed this little comparison. It was kind of silly and fun and some of it was just to satisfy my own curiosity. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.